So good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. So today's talk is uh, again some uh, homotopy theory uh, inside of homotopy type theory. So we'll first talk about the James construction, which is a gener generalization of the Freudenthal suspension theorem. So we'll first recall what is Freudenthal suspension theorem and explain this uh, generalization. And as you know, maybe. Uh, Freudenthal suspension theorem gives a lot of information about homotopy group of spheres. It gives the stability of some homotopy groups. But it does not allow to compute any kind of homotopy groups. And uh, the James construction will, is a generalization which will allow to compute some more homotopy groups. And in particular, in the second part, I will show to compute pi 4 of S3. So there is unfortunately still some computation missing at the end. But you will see. Um, OK, so I first recall the notion of uh, connectedness of a space and of a map, because uh, I will use that everywhere. So take x a type and n at least minus 2. You say x is n connected. if and only if the n truncation of x is contractible. OK. Uh, another definition of connected type uh, can be given using homotopy groups. So if n is at least uh, 0, then you have x is n connected. if and only if the zero truncation of x is contractible. So if you want the pi zero of x is, is contractible. And for all point x in x, and for all k in 1n, 1 to n, you have pi k of x is trivial. So a space is n connected when uh, everything is trivial uh, up to dimension n. So all homotopy groups are trivial up to dimension n. And stuff happens after that. So for instance, s n plus 1 is n connected. <coughs> because we know the, the first homotopy group of S n plus 1. OK, now if you take a map from x to y, we'll say f is, so n, again, n at least minus 2. And we say that f is n connected. If for all y in y, the fiber of f at y is n connected. So f minus 1 of y is n connected. So this is the h fiber of the map at the point y. So there are a lot of equivalent characterization of n connected maps. Another one is. A map is n connected if it's uh, left orthogonal to all n truncated maps. For instance. So equivalently, f is left orthogonal to all n truncated maps. So Mike uh, recalled that uh, yesterday in his talk. Um, OK. And another characterization, if n is at least 0, is that f induces an uh, equivalent, uh, an, an isomorphism between all homotopy groups uh, less than n. So when n is, is at least 0, 
f is unconnected if and only if the zero truncation of f which goes from the zero truncation of x to the zero truncation of y is a bijection. And for all points x and x, and for all k between 1 and n, you have pi k of f, which goes from pi k x x to pi k of y f of x is a, uh, an isomorphism. Uh, sorry. So for all k less than n, less than or equal to n, this map is an isomorphism. And the map for pi n plus 1 is a surjection. Okay, so it's pretty easy to see that because you can just, uh, using this definition, you can just write the long exact sequence for the map f. Uh, you, you get something with a, a bunch of zero in the first column, so you get all these isomorphisms and then a subjection at level n plus one. So <coughs> the vague idea that you should remember is that if you have x from x to y and connected, then in some sense x is an approximation of y up to dimension n. So say you want to study uh, some space y and you know the space x. If you find a map from x to y which is n connected, then you know basically everything in y up to dimension n, because this is exactly what this uh, theorem says. You know all the homotopy groups of y because they are the same uh, as those of x. And you also know that this is a, a subjection. Okay. So now, for instance, we want, if we want to study the spheres, we will find some map which goes from some small dimensional sphere to some higher dimensional sphere, which is sufficiently connected, and you will get a bunch of results on the homotopy groups. Okay, so before stating a fragmental suspension theorem, I will first recall what is the suspension, because there are several definitions and I will use both. So the suspension of a space, if you have A a type, suspension of A is defined to be the following push out. You have one, one, and A in the middle. So this is the, the usual suspension. You have the, the North Pole, the South Pole, and then for every point in A, you have a path from the North Pole to the South Pole. Now there is something, there is a different definition which is equivalent but sometimes it's better. It's called the redus reduced suspension. So if you take now a pointed type, so 
So usually in topology, the reduced, reduced suspension is defined by, you take the suspension and you assume A is pointed. So you have some base point here. So you have one canonical path from north to south. And what you do is just you contract this path down to a single point. So here we cannot really contract something down to a single point, but we can do it propositionally. So <coughs> the reduced suspension of A will be the following higher inductive type. It will have now only one base point, star, which is in the reduced suspension. Then um, for all elements of A, you will have an element of the loop space of the suspension. So for all points of A, you will get a loop in, in the suspension of A from the base point to the base point. So if this is the base point and you have A, you have a bunch of uh, loops like that. And then you need to say that what happens if you apply P to the base point of A, you should get the reflexivity path. So you get uh, one additional constructor which says P applied to the base point A is equal to the reflexivity. But yep. When you write omega sigma A, you don't talk about star. Uh, omega, it's implicitly uh, based at star. There is no other point mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. So if this is your base point, you just add the two dimensional cell in that. Okay? So in other words, if you look at this definition, get that sigma A is the free pointed type together with a pointed map from A to the loop space of the suspension of A. Because the constructor, the first one says that sigma A is pointed. This one says that you have a map from A to the loop space of the suspension. And this one says that P preserves the base point. So the suspension basically is just the free uh, pointed type together with the pointed map from A to the loop space of A. OK? And the two definitions are equivalent. You can write the map back and forth and prove that, there are, that the composition is the identity. But not different. Is, is no, but yes, if A is pointed, then the two definitions are, are equivalent. Because you can, every time you have a pass, you can compose with the canonical pass uh, going through the base point. And <laughs> yep. Yeah. We could we could just remove the together. Yeah. The sentence is just very good. No, it's good about sentence. Well, it's the free thing uh, like that. <laughs> you want Yes. Two points and for every point of A, uh, a pass between the two points. And you can prove that the two are the same. Okay? So when you take the loop space of something, intuitively you decrease the dimension. Everything which was uh, dimension one becomes of dimension zero. So every pass, every loop becomes a point. Uh, every two dimensional loop becomes a one dimensional loop and so on. And the suspension is Basically, we try to do the inverse operation. We take everything which is a point and try to turn it, turn it into a path. 
and everything which is a path in A, we turn it into a two-dimensional path, and so on. Can you repeat the beginning of the sentence? For the loop space? When no. you say the loop space, you really reduce the dimension. You, yes, okay. you reduce the dimension. And here you increase the di dimension. So we could ask, uh, do this, the two operations are inverse to each other? Say, if you increase the dimension and then reduce the dimension, is that an equivalence? So, so we, we have this map A to omega sigma A. Is that an equivalence? Because we take A, we increase the dimension with the suspension, then we decrease the dimension by the loop space. We have something which looks like A, but maybe not exactly. So in general, uh, it's not the case. Uh, one uh, simple argument is that just the, the, the loop space of the suspension has more structure. It's an H space, because you have an operation of composition of paths. And in A, in general, it's not the case. So this map ca cannot be a an equivalence in general. But um, okay. but you still know something about this map. It is the Freudenthal suspension theorem. which says that if A is end-connected, then this map A to the loop space of the suspension of A is 2n-connected. So it's not an equivalent, but it's at least more or less the same thing up to dimension 2n. So knowing A, you will still get some information of, uh, about the loop space of the suspension of A in the range from m n to 2n. So in particular, in particular, a consequence of that is the stability of homotopy group of spheres. We get that if you fix a natural number k, you get that pi n plus k of Sn is stable for n uh, at least k plus 2. So stable means that uh, they are all, they are all uh, isomorphic for every uh, possible n uh, at least uh, k plus 2. So this is a direct consequence of that, because the suspension of Sn is Sn plus 1, and then the homotopy group of the loop space are the sheeted homotopy group. So this is a direct consequence of this result. And in particular, uh, for k equals 1, what you get is this uh, stabilized uh, for n at least 3, so you get pi 4 of S3 equals to pi 5 of S4, pi 6 of S5, and so, on, and so on. So as soon as you know pi 4 of S3, you get all the pi n plus 1 of Sn from that. Uh, unfortunately, Freudenthal suspension theorem does not explain how to compute pi 4 of S3. Because you have A to the loop space of the suspension of A, which is some 2n approximation, but it's not enough to compute pi 4 of S3. We need a better approximation of it. And this is exactly what the James construction is about. It's to improve this, to, to give a, a sequence of successive approximation of omega sigma a, which are more and more, more and more connected.
OK, so more precisely, what we'll do is the following. So suppose A is a pointed type. So you have a map from 1 to A. Then I will define some space J2 of A with a map from A to J2 of A. And then J3 of A, J4 of A, and so on. So we'll have a sequence of spaces with map between them, like that. And we'll know uh, two things. First, we'll know the con connectedness of all the maps. So if, assume A is N connected, okay, assume A is K connected, then the map from 1 to A is K minus 1 connected. Okay, this is a general fact. If you have a space which is K connected, uh, the inclusion of, any of a point is K minus 1 connected because the fiber is the loop, loop space, which is k minus 1 connected. Then we'll prove that the map from A to J2 of A is 2k connected. The map from J2 of A to J3 of A will be 3k plus 1 connected, then 4k plus 2 connected, and so on. So the first map is k minus 1 connected. And then for each map, you, the connectedness increases by k plus 1. And then the second property we will we'll need is if you take the co-limit of this diagram, there is a question. Oh, okay. So if you take the co-limit of this diagram, the limit of the Jn of A, we can call J of A will prove that this J of A is actually equivalent to the loop space of the suspension of A. So <coughs> what does it give? Well, we have a map from every uh, of these guys to the co-limit. And moreover, this map for instance, the map from A to the suspension of A is <coughs> the so-called transfinite composition of all of these maps. And uh, connectedness is, preserv uh, is preserved by transfinite composition because this uh, connected maps are, are, are left class and uh, left cl class are closed under transfinite composition. So this map is 2K connected. This map is 3K plus 1 connected and in particular 2K connected and so on. So you get that this map is 2K connected. So you get, as a consequence, uh, James uh, the su horizontal suspension theorem. But you get more, because now, if you look at the map from J2 of A to the loop, uh, loop space of the suspension, now this map is 3K plus 1 connected. So you get a map like that, 2K connected, which is just Freudenthal suspension theorem. But you also get a map J2 of A, which is 3K plus 1 connected. And then a map from J3 of A to the loop space of suspension, which will be 4K plus 2 connected, and so on. So you get a sequence of better approximations. And when you want to study some homotopy group of omega sigma a, maybe the first map is not enough, as is the case for pi 3 of s2. But then we'll just go to the second map, and we'll need to study this j2 of a, and use that to compute uh, pi 4 of s3. And, and uh, of course, we have a, we'll have an explicit uh, definition of all this space. So we have an explicit definition of j2 of a, and we'll use that to compute uh, pi 4 of s3. Okay. Okay. 
Um, maybe so, some intuition on what are those uh, J, J, K, uh, J, N of A? Uh, at least topologically, topo. the J of A, the J of A, which is the loop space of the suspension of A, you can see it as uh, the free group, the free topological group. on the pointed uh, space A. Because, well, basically when you add A in the loop space of suspension of A, so every element of A is, of course, in the loop space of the suspension, but you have a lot more operation. You have composition of paths and you have inverses of paths and so on. And you can see that what you get is actually the free uh, topological group on A. Um, the problem with that is that it's not clear how to define that in homotopy type theory because we don't even know what is a group, which is not a set. Yeah? Is the bridge still the other thing here on the tail loop theorem? So in this case, if k is minus 1, then all the maps are minus 2 connected, which gives uh, no information at all. So the limit, no, the limit, no, no, yeah, I think we assume k at least zero because li the limit will not be the, yeah. yeah so uh, as long as you're mentioning the possibility that k is equal to zero, is this potentially useful even for pi n of Sn? For pi n of Sn, we have Freudenthal suspension theorem gives that, uh, at that as soon as you know pi 2 of S2, you know all pi n of Sn. But I don't know if you can use that to compute by 2 of S2, maybe. I think the, the, uh, the theorem that the loop space of the suspension of A is a free group on the pointed space A is true without the assumption. Yes, yes. yes so, so this is true without the assumption that K is at least 0. But I will explain just in few minutes why we need uh, k, uh, why we need a zero connected at least. And if there is some sort of possibility that this is really true, but um, I don't know what that would mean. Can I take the k of uh, this is equal to uh, nothing? I don't know. Yeah. If, it's, if, it's, uh, if it's not zero, can I'm sorry? Uh, okay, so I It's so pointed it's anyway. Yeah. Yes. This holds for any pointed space. Yes. Yes. So when I say free topological group on the pointed type a comma small a, it means that the small a becomes the unit of the group. So, so for example, you can pretend to check it for a zero, the uh, the zero field. Uh, yes. Because the suspension of the zero field is the one field, and the loop space of the one field is this, which is the free group. Yes. This is what I'm about to say. Yeah. Yeah. This is what I'm about to say. Yeah. This equation probably is not defined unless it's uh, unless it is uh, dimensional. Yeah. Factorial. Okay. So. 
we don't know how to say a topological group or something like that, but we can express what is the free topological group. Because the free topological group is just the free uh, <laughs> uh, pointed space with an action of A by equivalences uh, such that A, so small a, act as the identity. So if you take the free topological group, every element of A will act on it by multiplication. And this action is an equivalence. And uh, the base point, given that we said the base point should be the unit, the base point will act by the identity map. And so we can use that to define this free topological group, just saying, take the free pointed space together with an action of A by equivalences and a proof that A acts as the identity. So with a high inductive type, so maybe I should not call that JA. So I will call that F of A. So we can define it as a high inductive type. So there is one base point in F of A, then one alpha, which is an action of A by equivalences. And something which says that alpha applied to the base point equals uh, the identity equivalence on FA. Okay, so this is not something which is usually allowed in a high inductive type, but y you can just take uh, your favorite uh, definition of equivalence and unfold it. Like take alpha joint equivalence and you unfold it, you get a bunch of different constructors which are which are all allowed in a high inductive type. So this, defini this, this defines a perfectly correct high inductive type. And you can prove this uh, result uh, easily. <laughs> but <laughs> that, that it's the loop space of the suspension of n. I will do it in uh, just now. You mean yeah. wait f a equals f a yeah. well, it will be an equivalent uh, an equality in type, not in f a yeah. so no yeah yeah, no. <laughs> The, no, the, the, the reason yeah, is <laughs> <laughs> the, the work is, is because you have f of a on both sides. Yeah. If you have something else, it will not work. Yeah. But okay. But now, actually, if <coughs> a is zero connected, uh, we don't need to do that. We can just take the free topological monoid on A. We can just take, so this one uh, I will call it J of A, with one point in J, J of A, one action of A, which is just a normal action, not by equivalence, and again, a proof that the action of A is the identity map. So if A is zero connected, you can define that, and you get J of A equals F of A. 
So you don't need to have equivalence, you just need maps. The reason is that uh, you know that the action of the base point is the identity, which is an equivalent. But A is zero connected, so every point is merely equal to the base point. So every other action is merely equal to the identity action, so every other action is in fact already an equivalent. So in the case where A is zero connected, you can prove uh, you can just use uh, this one, which is the free uh, topological monoid on A. And now we can prove. Sorry. Yep. It's the free topological monoid. It's the free topological monoid in one word. Oh, yeah, okay. I haven't defined what is a monoid <laughs> or a free or a topological. <laughs> <laughs> this is just this uh, high index this time. And so now we can prove that this J of A is the loop space of the suspension of A. So the proof is very easy. You, if you know how to do pi on a, of S1, you know how to do that. So for instance, you define a vibration code from sigma A to type. So you can call it code if you want the type theoretic method or something else if you want the homotopy theoretic method. And so <laughs> codes Codes of the base point will be this this uh, free monoid J of A. Then, when you apply codes, uh, I don't know what name I choose, but something like P of A. So the suspension has one base point. Then, for every element of A, you have some canonical path uh, from the base point to the base point. I think I call it P of A. So for this, you, you get uh, alpha of A, which is the action of G A, uh, of A to G A, which is an equivalent because we are in the case where A is connected. So, so you take this alpha A, you prove that it's an equivalent, and then you apply the univalence axiom to get a path in the universe. And then you need to, you need some additional constructor which says, uh, app of code to uh, the P of the base point is uh, something, but this is just the, the last constructor which says that the action of the base point is, uh, KA, is the identity. And then you can do encode decode or uh, compute the total space and prove that the total space is contractible. This is exactly the same proof uh, as for pi one of S1. Um, this is not exactly the same because alpha is just an action at A on J of A. Okay. It's, not a, a it's not a multiplication on J of A. Okay. But, well, so it's similar. Yeah, so it's the half construct that yeah. we spoke about before. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Um, no, I doubt it, because I mean, it, would, it would mean that every space which has a H structure is equivalent to the loop space of uh, suspension, and <laughs> this is much more, uh, there is much more structure than just H space okay. structure. Okay, so this J of A, you can think of it as the free topological monoid on A. And then what, is, what are the J N of A? Well, J N of A, is just intuitively the subspace consisting of words of length at most n. So for instance, word of length at most zero, there is only one, which is the empty word, so you, you get one. The word of length at most one, uh, you get e exactly all the elements of A, so you get A, and then J2 of A, J3 of A, and so on, which are words of length at most n, intuitively, okay? Okay, so now we need to define that. Uh, 
Okay. So for that, we first need some lemma about connectedness of maps, which is basically exactly what uh, Peter used in his proof of Freudental suspension theorem. Slight generalization, but <coughs> basically the same. So first, if you have two maps, f from a to a prime and g from b to b prime, So you have the following diagram. Where each map you apply uh, the identity on one side and f or g uh, uh, on the other side. And you can take the, the push out of the top two arrows. take a push out and then there is a canonical map from the push out to a prime times b prime so thi this canonical map uh, i will write it f star g and f star g so f star g wait i will write it from here so f star g is a map from a prime times b push out m times b, m type b primes to um, m a primes times b prime, which is called the push out product uh, of f and g. So now, the result is that if f is n connected and g is m connected, then the push out product f star g is n plus m plus two connected. So as, as a special case, if you have A which is a point and B which is a point, this is just the wedge of A prime and B prime. And this map is the inclusion of the wedge into the product. And so, so you get the, the result that the inclusion of the wedge into the product has the connectivity, the sum of the connectivity of the two spaces. And the proof of this theorem is exactly the same proof as the proof of that the inclusion of the wedge into the product is uh, n plus n connected. So I don't, I don't think we've ever seen it in a talk, but I don't really have time to do that. So it's, it's been proven in Agda by Dan and in Koch by Peter, so it should be fine. I guess, yeah. Okay, so now we can we can start constructing the James construction. So constructing the JN of A and the maps between them. So assume you have A appointed types type with the map A naught from one to A. Um, so I write J not of A 
is 1. And so we will define the following. We'll define so for n in n, we'll define a space j n plus 1 of a. So by, uh, we'll define it by induction on n. So for every n, we'll define a space j n plus 1 of a. A map i n goes from j n of a to j n plus 1 of a. So if you see that as word of length at most n in the free monoid, uh, then this is the natural inclusion of word of length at most n into word of length at most n plus 1. Then we will need some alpha n of type a times j n of a to j n plus 1 of a. So if you have a word of length at most n and an element of a, you can mul multiply the two and you get a word of length at most n plus 1. Which is called cons. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Except that you go into some monoid with some cancellation and stuff like that, but yeah. <laughs> it's the free monoid wi with the base point uh, being the identity, so you need to question by yeah. stuff like that. And we will need some uh, commutative triangle. Sorry? And we will prove <coughs> this fact, which is with a formula you have, if you multiply something by the, by the base point, it's the same as uh, doing the inclusion of Jn of a into Jn plus 1 of a. Okay? So this is uh, our induction hypothesis. This is what, what we want to prove by induction. Sorry? How do you find the new base point to be higher than the free one? Um, we don't need to define a new a base you point. Just refer to the base point of JN. No, it's not the base point of JN, it's the base point of A. No. This is the map which sends X to uh, A not X. <coughs> Okay, so we want to do that by induction on n. So for n equals 0, we want to define j1 of a. So it will be a. The number one term in the sequence was a. i not of a should be something from 1 to a. Uh, what do you mean? I define, I define that by induction on n. So for n equals zero, I need to define j one of a. I define it to be a. You define j naught. You define induction there. No, because 
in the inductive step, I have a n plus one and n. So there is uh, some shift in the indices. I will define j n plus one together with i n together with alpha n. Right, right. And the j naught is uh, some previous uh, definition. It's a, it's a bit strange, but. So the question is, why isn't that a definition? We just having trouble understanding why we're not so doing it. What's right. the intended definition? It's the end. That's the goal of the reaction. Yeah. Just instead of thinking about what j n is, it's just yeah. 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 why can't you do j n plus one and higher in brackets if there's a structure? Because we don't want to. We want to go because we want something else. We yeah. Yeah. Why isn't that explicit? It's not a definition. <laughs> it's not the definition. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's <laughs> what I want to prove. I have not defined Jn plus 1 at all for now. I just say Jn plus 1 is a type, and there is a map In like that, and there is a map alpha In like that. But I didn't say what is Jn plus 1. So I'm looking for it. Is that the theorem we want to prove? Yes. This is what we want to prove, and I'm about to prove it. OK? So for n equals 0, we need to define J1 of A, which is A. I not of A, which will go from 1 to A, so we take uh, the base point A not. And alpha not of A, which should go from A to A, because you have A times Y to A, and we take the identity on A. Okay? Now, I suppose I have all of that for some n. I want to define it for n plus 1. What I, what I will do is the following. I take the push-out product of uh, the base point, so the map from 1 to a corresponding to the base point, with a n, that I suppose I already know. So this goes from, so it's not here anymore. So if you look at the definition of the push-out product, you get a map like that. Oops. You subtract it. Yes. This is a 1 times. This is 1 times. Yeah. OK. Now there is a map from that to j n plus 1 of a. So on the first component, you just take the identity of j1 plus n of a. On the second component, you take uh, the alpha n, which is the action goes from a times j n of a to j n plus 1 of a. And you need to check that uh, it, it, uh, it works for the path here. But the fact that it works, so this map was some i n, and the fact that it works is exactly uh, this uh, commutation, this diagram. Yeah, yeah. So I, I have this map. I can define this map. And then I take the push out of this diagram. And the space here, I call that j n plus 2 of a. I call that i n plus 1. And I call that alpha n plus 1. So I do have a type j n plus 2 of a with a map from j n plus 1 of a and a map from a times j n plus 1 of a. OK? This is 
This is the case from n to n plus 1, except that for j, uh, it goes from n plus 1 to n plus 2. <laughs> you have to recap what you already know. I, I already know uh, j n plus 1, i n alpha n. So this is what I used in this part, j n plus 1, i n alpha n. Uh, I also know j n. And then I construct j n plus 2, i n plus 1, and alpha n plus 1. Yes, and I have to check this equality. Uh, but if you look, this is just uh, one of the parts of the diagram. Like, if you, uh, if you just look at this part, this map is i n plus 1. And this map is, uh, yes, is the identity followed by alpha n. So if you restrict this, di this, uh, this the, the commutation of this diagram to the first uh, component. This map is first the identity, then i n plus 1. And this map is first you apply uh, a naught and then the identity, and you compose by alpha n plus 1. So what you get is exactly uh, this condition. So we have this condition by induction. OK? By definition, this is a push out, so we have a commutation. I, I define it to be the push out. So you, you have a two dimensional cell in, in between by definition of the push out. So where did the relative to the other come up? Yeah. So not yet. Not yet. Okay. But this is when we will compute the connectivity of this map. So now we can. Okay, I have a question. Yep. Suppose you convert your advertisement on the top board into an inductive definition. Then would this? it turn out to be the same as this construction in the case that you could do this construction in the state of the computation of that universal? Um, no. Because you, you don't get that. If you just take Jn plus 1 to be, say, the, the sum of these two spaces, then you don't get Even what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There will be some more yeah. relations. Yes. So, so you can get the other two equations. So you can write the, uh, the other co coherence condition corresponding to the second argument. So this is alpha n. This is uh, the identity. So uh, no, this is two. This is i n plus 1. This is the identity times i n. And this is alpha n plus 1. So what you get is something like alpha n plus 1 of a i n of x equals i n plus 1 of alpha n a x. OK, so this is the other coherence condition that you get when looking at the factor on the right. So if you take x, you see it as something with of length once more and you multiply by a, you could just away first multiply x by a and then uh, increase the dimension of x. Okay? And you need another condition coming from this factor, which is that if you have alpha n plus 1 of a naught and i n of x, you will have two different ways to reduce it. 
So you can either say it's an plus 1 of an of x using this uh, equality. Or using that, you say it's an plus 1 of alpha n a naught x. And then this is equal to a n plus 1 of a n of x. So using the two equalities, you have two different ways to prove that. And uh, there is a two-dimensional cell inside that. And the two-dimensional cell come exactly from this uh, factor above in the push-out. So now I think that if you say you want j n plus 1 with i n alpha n, this condition, this condition, and this commutation, then it defines a j n plus 1 unit. OK? Okay, now we can compute the connectivity of the map. Because what we want is i n is k minus 1 plus n times k plus 1 connected. So this is what I said at the beginning. The for n equals 0, you get something k minus 1 connected. And when n increases by 1, the connectedness increases by k plus 1. So to prove that, it's actually very easy. Because i0 is a0 by definition. And uh, this one is k minus 1 connected. Because we assume that a is k connected. And then i n plus 1 is a push out of the push out product a naught i n. And taking a push out of n connected map the gives an n connected map. And we know the connectivity of that. It's exactly the connectivity of i n plus the connectivity of a naught plus 2. So you get this uh, k plus 1. That's because um, uh, n connected maps are, are, are left orthogonal to n truncated maps, and left class are preserved the I push out. OK, so what we have so far is the following we have this sequence of spaces, and we know that this map is k minus 1 connected. This map 2k connected, this map 3k plus 1 connected, and so on. The only part missing is that the co-limit of this diagram is the loop space of the suspension. But we've already seen that the loop space of the suspension, in the case where uh, k is at least 0, so when a is connected, uh, we've seen that this is the free monoid uh, on a with a base point. So the only thing we need to check is that uh, this uh, co-limit has the same universal property as the free monoid on A with a base point. So we need to check that
is the the free topological monoid on A pointed. Because, uh, well, this is just one word. If I say free monoid, uh, we don't know what monoid means. At least when to with topological, we even less know what it means. <laughs> 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 this is what I defined earlier. If I say free monoid, you may think of monoid uh, based on set. At least here you can't. <laughs> Yes. So I mean this JA with one base point, one alpha, one action, and uh, something which says that the action of the base point is the identity map of GL. Well, no. Which one? That? The free topological monoid. So this is something we can define in in topology. Yeah. 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 So we c can call that J of A. And we want to know if this satisfies this uh, condition. OK, so to do that, we need to define the various constructors on the colimit and uh, define the dependent eliminator. So prove that this limit has uh, exactly the same dependent eliminator, and then uh, we'll be done. OK, I will put primes everywhere. <laughs> So I need to define a base point in J of A, but this is easy because it's a colimit and uh, J0 of A is already a point, so this J of A is uh, as a base point. So yeah, maybe I could uh, recall. What is the colimit? The colimit says if you have N in N and X in JN of A, then you have something called nx uh, in the colimit. And moreover, nx is equal to uh, n plus 1 i n of x. Because <coughs> this is the maps from j n to j n plus 1. So we need to define a base point in G, J, A. So this is easy. We just take 0 and the unique element of J naught of A. So J naught of A was unit. So it's called TT in some programming languages or star or whatever. The unique point of the one point space. OK, and then we need to define this. action. We need to prove that the colimit of the JN of A has an action on, uh, of A. So we'll do it by induction on the second argument. So alpha A and X. What is that? So A is in A, X is in JN of A. 
we can consider alpha n of a x. So we already have an action of a and j n, which land into j n plus one. So we can define alpha like that on the canonical elements of uh, j of a. Uh, but then we have to prove that this is uh, invariant by these uh, equivalent relations. So we have to prove that alpha a n plus 1 i n of x is equal to alpha a n of x. Because this is a high inductive type, we need to define it for the point and then prove that it's, it worked for the path as well. But we can just unfold the definition. This is, you apply the definition, this is n plus 2 alpha n a i n of x, just by applying the definition. And then uh, somewhere we have an equality for that. So alpha n of, uh, this is alpha n plus 1, sorry. So this alpha n plus 1 a of a i n of x is i n plus 1 of alpha n a of x. So sorry, sometimes I put parentheses, sometimes I don't. So using the equation above, you get that. Alpha n plus 1 of a i n of x is i n plus 1 of alpha n a x. But now, using this equality, this is n plus 1 alpha n a x, which is exactly alpha of a and n x. So you get a map from a to g a to g a, j a. Okay, then you need to prove that you have this property and you need to construct the dependent eliminator and all of that, so I will not do it here. Uh, but basically it's already the same, just by induction on j a, you <coughs> reduce to the case of canonical elements like that and then you use the various uh, commutation properties of alpha n and i n, and you get uh, the result. Okay? Uh, yes. Yes. The the two axioms plus the commutation of this diagram is equivalent to the, the definition of of j n plus two actually. So yes, you just need that. Okay, so, so I have what I said at the beginning that this colimit is the loop space of the suspension of A. And in particular, this map is 2K connected because it's a transcendent composition of 2K connected map. This map is 3K plus 1 connected, and so on. Okay. So now, so now let's see uh, how it gives some information about pi 4 of S3. So we will apply this to uh, the case A equals S2, and we have K equals 1, 
because S2 is uh, one connected. So what we get is the following. We have one S2, then some J2 S2, J3 S2, and so on. And the loop space of the suspension is just the loop space of S3. Uh, moreover, we know that this map is zero connected. <laughs> this map is two connected, because k equals one to, to k. This map is four connected, uh, and so on. So six connected, eight connected. And we have a bunch of maps like that. So in particular, we know that the map from S2 to omega S3 is two connected. Which means that the, the best we can get from that is that pi 2 of S2 is equal to pi 2 of omega S3, which is pi 3 of S3. So from that, we, we get that, uh, th so this is the sus fundamental suspension theorem. So you, you, we get the stability result that once you know pi 2 of S2, you know all pi n of Sn for bigger n. But if you look at the pi 3, the, connected, the two connectedness of this map just tell us that we have a surjection from pi 3 of S2 to pi 4 of S2, of S3, but does not give in any other information. So we know that pi 3 of S2 is Z. So we know that at least pi 4 of S3 is a quotient of Z, but uh, this map does not give enough information. But now we can look at the other map from J2 of S2. to omega of S3. This map, this time, is four connected. So in particular, we get pi 3 of J2 of S2 equals pi 3 of the loop space of S3, which is pi 4 of S3. So now we have a better approximation of omega S3. So we just have to compute this pi 3 of J2 S2, and we get pi 4 of S3. Um, given that it's 4 connected, we also have pi 4 of J2 S2 equals pi 5 of S3. Um, but I don't know how to compute pi 4 of J2 of S2, so it's still not enough. But so, so what we'll do now is to try to compute pi 3 of j to s2, and it will be equal to pi 4 of s3. OK? Um, so what is j2 of s2? Uh, if you just uh, unfold the definition, you can see that j2 of s2 is the following uh, push out. So you take S2 times S2. You have the inclusion of the wedge uh, into the product, which corresponds to the two axes of S2 times S2. And you identify the two axes together. So if you want to see that as word of length at most 2, what is a word of length at most 2? It's two elements of S2, such that when one of them is the base point, then it collapses to a one single element of S2. OK? So this is a four dimensional. If, if you do it with S1, then you could try to visualize it. So that means you are doing together a longitude and the meridian of, of the torus. Yeah.
OK, so we need to compute the pi 3 of this pushout. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know. There is no formula or stuff like that for pi 3 of a pushout. So we need to do some more to do that. Okay. The first thing we will do is try to uh, understand this S2 times S2. Try to decompose it in something else. So the proposition is the following. Uh, there is a map from S3 to the wedge S2 wedge S2. Such that S2 times S2 is the following push out. The push out of S2 wedge S2 with one along S3. So a way to understand that is that you have S2 wedge S2, so two, uh, a wedge of two spheres. And this is just gluing a four-dimensional four cell onto a S2 wedge S2. So So in topology, this is very easy to, to prove, actually. So in in topology, you can do the following. You say, what is S2? S2 is a CW complex with one zero cell and one two cell, OK? And S2 times S2 is, again, a CW complex with one zero cell. So the when you have two CW complexes, to take the product, you just take the product of cells. That's very easy. So you have one zero cell, you have two two cells, and you have one four cell. So your zero cell is a point. The two two cells, there is only one way that they can be glued to the point. So you get a wedge of two S2. And then you have one four cell, which has to be glued along this thing. So, th so there exists a map from S3 to the wedge, which is the attaching map, such that S2 times S2 is this push out. Here, I mean topology. So the sphere is the boundary of the four cell. So the attaching map is a map from the boundary of the four cell, which is S3, to uh, the n minus 1 uh, skeleton. So this is very easy to do uh, with CW complexes. Uh, unfortunately, it uses the fact that, for instance, the boundary of a four-dimensional disk is a three spheres, three sphere, which is not at all uh, homotopy invariant. So we cannot do the same argument in homotopy type theory. Um, but there is a way to do it anyway, which is Yeah. 
OK, so how can, you, how can we do that anyway? So we will use the, the same uh, very nice lemma that I used uh, last time about you take a three by three diagram and take push out in one direction and in the other direction and you get the same thing. So let me first write some diagram. Then we'll check that it gives something interesting. OK, so what are the maps? This is the first projection. This is the first projection. This is the first projection. This is the second projection. Then this is the identity. Identity. This is constant to the North Pole. This is constant to the South Pole. So, so I define a diagram like that. You have pi 1, pi 1, pi 1, pi 2, the identity two constant maps. So we need the diagram to commute. Uh, those three uh, squares commute definitionally. Uh, but this square does not commute definitionally because north is not equal to south. So we need, we need to add a two-dimensional cell alpha here. Oh, we continue on this side. So there are many ways to prove that this diagram commute. There are many different propositional equalities. Um, okay, maybe I can write. No. So alpha goes from S1 times S1 to north equals south. So now I'm seeing S2 as the suspension of S1 with this north, north and south presentation. And the map we'll take is alpha of x, y is the meridian corresponding to y. OK? So I, I have a 3 by 3 diagram uh, which commutes. One of the commutation is just propositional, but it doesn't matter. And the idea is that we take the push out of all the rows and the push out of the resulting column. It will be equivalent to the push out of the columns and then the push out of the row. So what is the push out of the first row? For the first row, you have S2. And then uh, you have a point and you have a circle of paths between the point and the North Pole. The North Pole should be above. So what you get is S2 wedge S2. What is the push out of this line? This line is the join of S1 times S1. And uh, in my talk on the up vibration, I proved that this is uh, the double suspension of S1. So this is the three sphere S3. And what is this one? Uh, this line is just a cone on, on S1. So this is just contractible. This is a point. OK. Now, what are the push out of the different columns? push out of that is S2. What is the push out of that? You have S1 times S1, and then S1, S1, but both uh, pi 1, not pi 1 and pi 2. So actually, this diagram is just S1 times uh, the right diagram. And uh, so this is just a product of S1 with the suspension 
of S1. And product commutes with push out. So what you get is S1 times S2. Okay? And the map you get in this direction, given that you have a pi 2 here, it's just the identity uh, on S2, which is just a projection here. And now what is the push out of this diagram? You have S2 and you glue a circle uh, onto a point. What you get is just S2. Because you have S2 and then you do something like that. Like. And now what is the map here from S1 times S2 to S2? Well, the North Pole is sent to the North Pole, the South Pole is sent to the South Pole, and where when you are in between, you are, you are some Y here in S2, you are sent exactly to the meridian corresponding to Y. So you can prove very easily in, in type theory, just by an induction on this argument, that this is again the second projection. And then what is the push out of this diagram? This diagram is again the, push the diagram for the suspension of S1 times S2. So the push out of that is just S2 times S2. So we just define the map from S3 to S2 wedge S2 such that this push out is S2 times S2. I'll try to finish soon. Okay. So now we want, what we want is to study this J2 of S2. So J2 of, the of S2 was the following push out. So now I can replace S2 times S2 by the expression I have above. So S2 push out S2 wedge S2. One, so I just replace S2 by S2 times S2 by the expression above. Uh, and this map, you can just check in the construction that this map is exactly the map uh, the, the na natural map from the wedge to the wedge. So you can uh, move the parentheses and get this push out, push out S3, one. But now what is this push out? You just have S2 and you glue uh, S2 times S2 along some identity map. So this one is actually just S2, this part. So what you get is J2 of S2 is equal to the push out of S2 and 1 along S3 for some map here from S3 to S2, which is uh, this map from S3 to the wedge uh, composed with the co-diagonal from the wedge to S2. Okay. Okay, so let's call this map F. So F is the map from S3 to S2 that we constructed in this proof. So what you can prove, so if you look at pi 3 of F, goes from pi 3 of S3 by 3 of S2, just a map from Z to Z.
So pi 3 of f is just the multiplication by some number, 4. Okay? If you have any map from S3 to S2, take the pi 3, you get map from Z to Z, which is a morphism of groups. And you look at the image of 1, you get some n. And this map is just multiplication by n. Okay, I need to use some more non-trivial argument. So this square is the definition of J2 of S2 as a push-out. Now you can take the pullback of that. You get something like that. Um, okay, so... If I call f uh, this push pullback, so this is the fiber of the map from S2 to the J2 of S2. And if you if you write the long exact sequence for the for the map S2 to J2 of S2, what you get is by three of J2 of S2 is equal to z quotiented by the image of the map sorry that quotiented by the image of this map goes from pi 3 of f to pi 3 of s2 f2 so this is just when you write the long exact sequence you, you get exactly that so what we need to understand is what is the image of this map but now we can use the blackers masse theorem. So blackers masse theorem says that uh, this map is too connected. And this map is zero connected. Because every map from S3 to S2 is zero connected. So it's easy to check. And blackers masse says that the canonical map here is too connected. In particular, it's a surjection on the pi 3. And we are interested in the image of this map. But given that this is a surjection, the image of this map is ex exactly the image of that map, which is by 3 of f. And what is the image of by 3 of f? It's exactly nz for this n. Okay, so what we get is that pi 4 of s3, which is pi 3 of j2 s2, is equal to z mod n for this n. And this is one uh, uh, very concrete and non-trivial example of why we may want to have canonicity. Because this n is a closed term of type z, <laughs> defined with a lot of univalence and higher inductive type. <laughs> <laughs> so in a perfect world, if you formalize that in a proof assistant with a computational interpretation of univalence, Yes, so the n is the image of 1 by this map. So if you look at everything which, which I use and everything in this proof, you get a closed term of type z uh, using a lot of univalence uh, and a lot of high inductive type. So if we add the proof assistant with a computational interpretation of univalence and you formalize all of that, you can just ask 
what is the value of n, and you will get 2. Oh. <laughs> Maybe. Sorry? Did you get Maybe. Maybe. I hope you, you will get 2. <laughs> well, we don't have a proof assistant with these properties yet, so we can check now. <laughs> Um, so, no. Do <laughs> 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 you know in principle that you could eliminate everything that can be accused of? Well, no, th th this no. is exactly the content of the no, conjecture. No, for, this case. for this particular case, you ca so you can define this map. Y you have this map from S3 to S2. Mm. We also have the opt map, which is the generator of S3 to S2. Uh, so, which is another map from S3 to S2 which is the generator. And you can define uh, two times the opt map as a map from S3 to S2. And then not, uh, it should be enough to just write down the two maps and check that they are homotopic. Uh, this map is homotopic to two times the opt map. But the, the computation are, are quite complicated to do, so I, I haven't but really managed to do it. Yeah, there are a lot of non-trivial high inductive types. And that's where it's not clear what happens. So maybe we can, maybe we can, I mean, it's cheating a little bit. It only works for two episodes. Well, you, you can maybe prove that uh, the element which you get in pi 4 or 3 is not zero by one method. And then try to prove that twice this element is zero by another method. So I, I think proving that twice the element is zero is not very difficult, but proving that w this element is not zero uh, seems much more complicated. Well, uh, I mean, uh, a, 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 a modern homotopy theorist would probably do it using, um, um, no, maybe it's not zero. Okay, let's, 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 